Way down in Terrytown, there's a special way to get around. It's the only way I've ever found to play above the ground. Zooming along the treetops, <laughs> zipping way up in the sky. Zigging and zagging, forgive me for bragging, but gee how I love to fly. Zooming along the treetops, <laughs> zipping way up in the sky. Zip, zip, zoom, a loom, zigzag, zig, a zoom, gee how I love to. Zip, zip, zoom, a loom, zigzag, zig, a zoom, gee how I love to fly. was a night made for stargazing. But that's not why all the planes at Easy Airlines were staring at the sky. They were watching and waiting for Savannah, the famous supersonic jet who was returning home to Terrytown for the first time in many years. They, they say, say she's the fastest plane in the world, said Herky. Yeah, and the most beautiful too, said Snuffy. I can remember when she first started out, old Oscar said. Doesn't seem so long ago. Big Jake remembered too. You know, he said, even back then she was something special. Hey, Tracy, isn't it exciting? Said JJ, wagging his rudder in eager anticipation. Yeah, said Tracy. I can't believe this is happening. An ear-splitting boom crackled in the sky and echoed across the valley. The planes looked up just as a pair of light tore out of the darkness to the east. It was Savannah streaking home. The elegant jet had barely come to a stop when all the planes rushed over to greet her. They pushed in close to get a good look. Tracy squeezed through to the front. Herky had to hover above the crowd in order to see it all. Standing atop the fuel truck, Easy O'Malley cleared his throat and began reading a speech. <clears throat> Seeing you here tonight brings to mind... Uh, it uh, brings to mind... Uh, oh, shucks, this speech is boring. Easy O'Malley tore his notes in two. What I mean to say is, it's sure good to see you, Savannah. Welcome home, my dear. Thanks, Easy. You're still sweet as sugar cane, she said. You've made me feel right at home, all of you have. Then, because she was tired after her long trip, she made her way to the hangar to relax for a while. Easy O'Malley posted a Do Not Disturb sign outside the hangar so that Savannah could rest in peace. But Tracy had to talk with her right away. She peeked into the hangar and said timidly, Excuse me, Miss Savannah, may I talk with you for a moment, please? Savannah gave Tracy a warm smile. Sure, honey. What's on your mind? Tracy hurried into the hangar. She had so much she wanted to say, it all came out at once. I never get to do anything fun. I never get to go to interesting places. All I do is study, 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 train, 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 practice, practice, practice. It's so boring. But you, you go to exciting places all the time. It must be wonderful. You're wonderful. And I want to be just like you. But I don't know how. And I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Savannah looked at Tracy with calm, reassuring eyes. One day, when you're older, you'll go to all the places I've been, and then some. But you know what? I bet things wouldn't seem so boring right now if you learned to use your imagination a little more. The uh, what do you mean? asked Tracy. Well, when I was your age, living in this very hangar, I used to dream about the big, wide world outside and all the faraway places I wanted to see. And guess what? In my dreams, I could go there. What good is that? 
asked Tracy. It's not real. It's just a dream. Tracy, don't you see? You have to have dreams. If you don't dream dreams, you have nothing to reach for. You have no dreams to come true. Later that night, before falling asleep, Tracy thought about everything Savannah had said. She stayed up very, very late, thinking and thinking and thinking. The morning was unusually hazy as Tracy set out on her training flight. Climbing high over the mountains, she thought she saw Savannah way in the distance, disappearing into a dense patch of clouds. Racing to the spot where Savannah had been, she came upon a tunnel through the clouds. But entering the tunnel, Savannah was nowhere in sight. Tracy called out, Savannah! But her own echo is all that came back. A bluish white light twinkled at the far end of the tunnel. She hurried forward and at long last reached the end. Emerging into the light, she could not believe her eyes. Through wispy clouds, a shimmering city of glass loomed on the horizon. Everything sparkled and glistened like diamonds. It was the most breathtaking thing Tracy had ever seen. In the distant haze, she thought she saw Savannah. But before she could call to her, a glint of sunlight flashed in her eyes. The next thing she knew, she was gliding over a boundless field of golden sunflowers that reached from the ground all the way to the sky. White puffy clouds rolled in over the giant flowers. But these were no ordinary clouds. They were shaped like tiny tugboats and each carried a smiling yellow duckling. Like an armada on parade, they floated by in perfect formation. Tracy was delighted, but quite confused. She shut her eyes, and when she opened them, she was flying under a rainbow. Well, not just a rainbow, but thousands of rainbows lined up one after the other, forming an immense endless archway. Tracy looked down and was surprised to see that she was flying over a silvery sea. What happened next was even more amazing. A big blue dolphin leaped out of the ocean, hung in the air, smiled at Tracy as she flew past, then dove back into the water with a stupendous splash. Just then, a shadow streaked across the water. When Tracy looked up to see what it was, she thought she saw Savannah racing toward the distant snow-capped mountains. But when she reached the towering white peaks, there was no sign of Savannah, only a family of enormous snowmen who smiled and waved to her through the foggy mountain air. Suddenly, the fog thickened around her, and in the next instant, she was back inside the cloud tunnel. Before long, she emerged into the hazy daylight, and there, just ahead, was Savannah. Tracy followed her back over the mountains and across the valley until at last they arrived safely home. Well, what happened? Where were we? How did we get there? Tracy said with a start. Not we, Tracy. You. You were dreaming. Savannah's voice was soft, almost a whisper. Dreaming? What dream? Tracy was confused. The dream that came out of your imagination, Savannah said. And I think now you know that dreaming is the first step to getting wherever you want to go. But I can't get there without you. Sure you can, Tracy. You already have. I didn't take you anywhere. I just pointed the way. You mean I went by myself? Tracy's eyes lit up with dawning awareness. Oh, Savannah, it was so beautiful. There was a big blue dolphin and giant sunflowers and a city made of glass. And, and you know what? You were in my dream too. I'll tell you a secret, Savannah said softly. While you've been dreaming of faraway places, I've been dreaming of home right here in Tarrytown. And guess what? You were in my dream too.